Go, go ahead. Basically, the reason why men cheat is not because they don't like the girls. For us, like, when you sleep with a guy, we're emotionally invested. For a guy, he's not emotionally invested into us. Most of the time, it's just the heat of the moment. And then the next morning after, and, and the next morning after, you know, that one night stand, there's that post nut clarity that, that he feels like he doesn't see a life with you. That's the oxytocin he see, kicking in. He, exactly. Mm-hmm. But, you know, he doesn't see a life with you and he doesn't see you as a partner or relationship or anything. For her, it's oxytocin. And, for him, it's tryptophan. And for a female, it's, you know, for guys, it's all performance. It's performance based. Mm-hmm. For females, we don't really do as much during, mm-hmm. like, you know, when we're on the bed it's usually the guys can i clarify something here really quickly is because because what you're bringing up is kind of a common misperception okay it's like well and i see this in the chat as well here is that it's like uh, it's no longer the devil made me do it it's my biology made me do it and we don't have any control over it no we absolutely are responsible for our own actions and our and for as far as the results and the and any of the consequences that come after that it's, i'm not a, a, you know saying that we should be absolved of any of those things the other thing is that uh, you're conflating what's known as um it's a it's a, was a proximate goal versus ultimate goal. Mm. So yeah. so in in an evolutionary perspective, I might want like when I met my wife for the first time and I saw her at the club, I didn't go, hmm, I wonder if she'd be a really good mother for my children. I wonder if we could start a family together and we could reproduce and, and, and like my focus is on actually, you know, breeding with this woman that I just met in the club. My focus is on I want to tap that ass. That's the proximate goal. The ultimate goal is having kids and having a family and everything else. Now, that ultimate goal is something that gets that is also downstream once again from the biology. So, proximate goal and ultimate goal are both downstream from the biological fact that this is what this is what men are about. Yeah. Just one thing on biology, right? Mm-hmm. So, and Roller, you were making the argument, hey, it's kind of based in biology, paternity, uncertainty. Mm-hmm. Um, and you sort of objected to that a little bit. I, at least that was my impression. No, um, I didn't object I don't think to it. I'm, didn't she's, object. Not, she's not. Object. I'm saying the objection could also be based in biology. Sure. Um, wait, wait, what's the objection? Well, no, it's the, but, but the you, biology made me do it. My, well, my, self, my selfish gene biology made me do it. I'm saying our evolvement of culture is also biological. Like, like you said, culture but it's follows downstream. downstream. But, it's, but it's always, but our, our involvement of culture is always set up mm-hmm. so that it fits our biology. Does that make sense? We don't build cities made of sulfur and ammonia, right? We, because that, they're toxic to human beings, and we don't generally jump off, off, off our balconies every day. We, we have elevators. Our societies are created for the safety and procurement of, of homo sapiens. So that's bec- biology leads culture. Does that make sense? In every case, biology leads culture. But it's never I, the other way around. I, I think what you were kind of getting at is you were saying, well, when you have sex with someone, you know, you, you mentioned birth control, for example. Well, why, God damn. you know, what's the deal with birth control, you know? You, you recall when you were saying that? Mm-hmm. So I guess my response to you is, well, if you're kind of saying men should disre- disregard their sort of innate biological response to this, then shouldn't women also, for example, uh, disregard their attraction towards men who are tall, for example, which has a root in biology? Or, uh, sorry, go ahead. I was saying men already disregard that biological need when they fuck with a condom on because if they're pro- like, if their goal is to spread their seed because that's what the biological instinct is. But he kind of made the differentiation between approximate desire and then ultimate desire. Or 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 a conscious desire and a subconscious desire. You have a neocortex. That's what celebrates you. Se- I'm sorry, celebrates separates you from lizards. Your you have you can cognitively un- your genes have no contrast. Con- your genes don't understand what contraceptives are. If your genes understood what contraceptives are, they never let you use them. Your genes want to replicate themselves, but you cognitively understand what contraceptives are. You subconsciously do not, and that's where that's where the 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 conundrum comes in. Exactly what Michael said. Like you can you can want to spread your seed. That's the objective of sex, right? But you can also do that at a time where you're not ready to have a kid. So your biology, your genes, everything is telling you like I want to go through with this. Your brain up here is saying I don't want a kid right now. So it has nothing to do with that argument. At well, all. I would say also most people who are having sex, it's more for cat. It's like casual. It's recreational. It's re- so, it. yeah. Excuse yeah. me. Recre- recreational, recreational. Yes. Um, I want to have just a little back and forth with you. The thing about the tall preference. A little bit, but it was more so. I guess you said it was a bit of a double standard, right? Well, you yeah. say okay when it comes like for example a guy who has a high body count, 
you object to him desiring a partner who has a low body. But then how come short women can desire tall men? Is that what you were going to ask? Well, you're, you're uh, preempting me a little bit there. But, but basically, I mean, my, I guess my question to you is, is it wrong to desire things in a partner that you yourself do not possess? No, and I don't think that was the basis but, of my argument. We were talking about a study which posits that two virgins have the optimal marriage success rate. So I'm saying in that, that's not... Well, I think you're shifting a little bit because initially I think you were saying, well, it's, I don't know your exact wording, but it sounded like you objected to, for example, a guy who has a high body count desiring a woman with a yes, low body count. Yes, in that count. specific instance, but I'm not saying, I'm not making the generalization that you can't want something that you personally lack. Well, I was saying in that specific instance, it doesn't map on because of the study we mentioned where it does map it's on. It's not reasonable to hope to, like, I, I'm just going to be honest with you, the probability of you, the person you marrying being a virgin is infinitesimally low. You understand that? Why? I thought guys are more often virgins than girls. It's way harder That's for guys point. to get laid. No, no, I agree with that. You won't be attracted to them. I, no matter what you tell us about your energy and the connection and the chemistry, uh, no, no offense. Like, I just don't believe that you fully understand what you're attracted to. I think later on, once you come to the realization that you keep finding these certain individuals attractive for certain reasons, and those reasons have to do with hypergamy, uh, you're going to come to the realization that the, the things that cause those men to be virgins are the reasons why you won't be attracted to them. And the likelihood of you finding a man that you have chemistry with is far more likely with a man who is attractive to the opposite sex. So the likelihood of you finding a dude who is also a virgin is it becomes progressively lower and probably lower the longer you wait. It becomes progressively lower. Well, well I sorry, I just wanted to go back to the point where you said like, oh, they're fucking us with condoms because they don't want to have kids. I think the reason why they're fucking you with condoms, not you specifically, but in general, is because you've made yourself so easy. Like, they don't want to fuck someone who might give them gonorrhea, in my opinion. I think it's more of a safe. No, they want to fuck other girls that they don't yeah. want to get I don't pregnant. think she's yeah. wrong, but I don't know where that came from. No, I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. It's been stuck on my It's the proximate goal. Like, I want to get, thing, get off with that girl. We got it. It's a dunk that came out of nowhere, but I don't know where that, <laughs> I, I, don't I don't know, know how just, we got there. It. It. it was a loose ball know. foul. Yeah. Technical too, but two free throws. That was a good good point, but I don't know how we got there. Question for you. Is that an expectation that you have? Do you think that's going to happen for you? Marrying a virgin guy? Yeah. It's not. Yeah. Do no, want? I don't care. Like I said, I don't conflate selectiveness with body count. I've reiterated that several times. Okay. That I, I don't value the guy being a virgin. I want someone who's selective and has high standards. Like I, because to me, that's what correlates with infidelity. So do you think there's men out there that would be with you and have slept with, not slept with women that are less attractive than you? Wait, can you rephrase that? So for example, if you date a man, do you, would you expect that all the women that he had slept with would be at your level or higher? Oh, that's not even technically what I meant by selectiveness. I more so don't want to date a guy who's so horny and down bad that he gets like one DM from a girl and he jumps on it. Does that make sense? So yeah, that's what I judge fidelity on. That's like the parameter I use, not body count. Okay, but can I ask you a question? Because you're over here saying that you yourself are not selective, but you want the guy to be selective. When so did I say I'm not selective? Well, I said I'm, I'm selective. highly she's selective. Well, no, selective. but she was, Allegedly. you were saying how like you don't care if like they're fat, if they're this, if they're that, they have more money, if they have less money. I'm selective, just using a different metric than you are. So you just want them to be like smart and funny, basically. Yeah, I would say that's still highly selective. The average yeah. person is a dumbass. <laughs> The average person is actually average. <laughs> the average person has a 100 IQ. I, I understand what you're saying. The average person is not a dumbass. It's just they're overrepresented by, um, you know, sorry, I'm, I'm going to go down a path and I'm gonna get myself in deep shit. Sorry. Oh, we got another one? Yeah. Uh, and we'll got do, a live one. We got a couple super chats here coming in. I just wanted to kind of put a cherry on top on our little conversation. So what, what I was kind of getting at, and I don't know if you've kind of almost walked back your position a little bit, but I, I think it's... This whole thing of women objecting, for example, to a man who has a high body count and he doesn't want a woman with a high body count or he wants a woman with a low body count. I mean, women desire traits in men all the time that they don't possess themselves. They want a guy who's funny, but they're not funny. They want a guy who's rich, but she's not rich. They want a guy who's charismatic, but she's not charismatic. So, I mean, I think it's both men and women desire traits in partners that they themselves don't possess. 
men and women are just, we're not equal. Sure, if I prefer a brunette guy over blonde, that's a preference. When guys talk about preferring a girl who's a virgin, that's not their preference. That's, that's a philosophy. They're yeah, saying a girl who's a saying virgin, virgin. They're saying a, a girl. It's it it a preference. It's a preference on the fact that they think that girl is less likely to cheat. They think she'll make a better wife. When I prefer a brunette, it's not because I think he's going to be a better husband. It's not because I think it'll propagate the nuclear family in America more than a blonde. But when they talk about girls with low body counts, that's kind of what they're propagating. So, so what you're saying is that it's they're conflating they're conflating i'm saying they're not really referring to preference they're saying there's a reason they use the term low value woman i'm not calling a brunette a high value guy or a blonde a low value guy oh, red pillars will call a girl with a high body count low value and a girl who's a virgin high value well, so it's not preference they're they're mapping it onto what they consider objective <laughs> virtues if, if i prefer a woman with a low body count isn't that a preference it is, but you know the sphere we're referring to, the red pill sphere. They'll say that's an objective virtue. A man who virtue. has never even heard of these terms. Have you heard of the red pill preference. sphere? I've never heard of this sphere. Red pill sphere. sphere, is that what we're calling it now? Is, I thought is, it was a manosphere. What I red pill is this? What is this the thing she pill. speaks I, of? I don't know why you're attaching this. I mean, before the red pill is a fairly new, I mean, within what, the past 10 years, really. Uh, 20 <laughs> get years. Get the book, by the way. <laughs> um, the difference, the mail, by the way. what marks a preference um, is subjectivity, but when guys talk about girls with low body counts, they're typically thinking of it in an objective way. So even a guy who's not red pilled, they'll probably say, this girl with a low body count is objectively better, right? That's why I'm, it's, I'm it's really still a preference, help. but do you understand have, what but, I'm but saying? The, but that judgment is based on their biology, and it's mm -hmm. based on subconscious effects that's happened through evolutionary psychology, But right? it's not really a preference for them specifically. They're saying it's a preference for their for gender. Men just don't want to fuck horse. Better for what? Yeah, they do. Okay, better for they what? want to fuck horse, but what they, they don't want to, like, wet. Every man wants a slut. He just wants her to be his slut. They don't want to marry that slut. Every man wants a slut. He just wants her to be his. So if I like brunettes over blondes, I'm not going to say girls prefer brunettes over blondes. When guys say, I have a preference for low body count, typically they say, Say guys prefer girls with so, low body so let, counts. Do you understand why that's not necessarily a preference? Because no, no, they're not it's, they're it's not still, speaking still specifically for themselves. That's why I'm saying it's more of a philosophy. I prefer I prefer vanilla ice cream over poop ice cream, and that's because of my genetics. Like that's the reason why. The, 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 let's go back. <laughs> let's go back to this other thing you were saying. Mm -hmm. How about this double standard? I know several men, and I have several clients that are under six feet tall, and they don't get chosen by women. Shockingly, some of them don't get. They have a harder time with women than taller men. That preference is also based in evolution, and we as men are fully aware of it. Do you think that's also a double standard that women have towards men? Do women create a culture of podcasting and memes ridiculing men who are under six feet tall? Yes. Do I do I tell oh, a five foot oh, ten oh, guy oh, is low yes. value? Yes. yes. In retaliation. Call her daddy. Yes. Call her daddy. I don't want yes. that. Yes. Call her daddy. Her. The biggest podcast in the world. Fifty yes. million dollars. I'm by just the saying way. I have yet to see I have yet to see me. a blue pill podcast. No, it's not blue pill podcast because they don't. They, no. There's all these things. What do you call a guy who's five eleven? A friend? You haven't seen this meme? Watch anything Absolutely. by Ben Shapiro and Matt Walsh. Absolutely. You'll see a blue pill they, cru they crucify men, and they, and they actually show when you look at dating apps, it goes. They show Tinder, Bumble, and Hinge. They show a distribution of what women find attractive, and six three is actually the prime number. Uh, once you get above six three, six six, it actually starts to drop. At six feet tall, you're still really high. It goes six feet, and at five eleven, it plummets. This doesn't happen in Europe because they use the metric system. But in the United States, at five eleven, it plummets. Yes, men do get ridiculed for being short. Yes, they do. This That's is not being ridiculed. Yeah, it's not. Being, they're not being, they're okay, not okay, being okay, chosen cool. selectively, and they're being made fun of for being short. I hear women all the time. I listen to women talk all the time, and one of the men Main complaints is, he, this is he's a great guy, but he's too short. So women that's are not ridicule. Yeah, no, 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 no. That's no, literally no, in that no, instance no. preference. No, listen, because so what I said, what? when I said I wouldn't fuck a but fat bitch, you got mad. But all of a sudden, that now that height preference. is into the yeah. equation for men, like it's first okay. of all, I wasn't the one. Okay, who okay. Said well, that. Well, some yeah. of you got mad at the whole entire fat bitch thing. So For it's it's we're not mad anymore. Bad. We've moved on okay, from since then. I know we've moved then. on, but we, I'm just we, saying we, 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 that I'm was like about that like height. an hour ago. Okay, okay. I know, but okay. I'm just saying that like that has everything to do with it. Like, cause height, it's in the well, it's a biological thing. Okay, biological. that's another thing. Is it's 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 an innate preference if you if you if you, if you like, want to use those terms. But there's a difference between saying I want a girl who's got like a brunette girl and a and a and a, and a blonde girl, or whatever. That's uh, yeah, that's a fetish, a, a preference, whatever. But the reason why I am. Uh, hesitant to get with a single mommy is because I have 100,000, 200,000 years of evolution that says that woman is provably already raising the child, uh, or uh, I would have to raise the child of another man right there. So that hesitancy is not a preference, it is a, a biological adaptation to be aware that I, if I go and I put my resources towards 
raising that, you know, <coughs> participating in the parental investment Absolutely. of another man's child. Hold on dollars. just a second here, Rolo. Khalifa, you're failing to understand that the double standard of promiscuity applies to marriage. Men want female virgins for marriage. For Institute for Family Studies, multiple sex partners reduced marital quality for women but not men. Alvin Sam, thank you for the big $200 donor. Appreciate it. Yeah, I would say in general, women aren't necessarily more or less attracted to men based off their body count. But if we're trying to propagate the healthiest and most successful institution of marriage, that's based off both partners well, being well, virgins the, until marriage. The original point you don't made was about a double standard. And the thing is, it, let, let's bring up one more part about this double standard. For me, being afraid to be with a woman who's been with 80 guys, there's actual studies that show from an evolutionary standpoint, Institute for Family Studies, the study he just brought up, there's actual studies that show that, that, that could be deleterious for my relationship. For you to choose a man who's under six feet tall, some of the best fighters on the planet are under six feet tall. Some of the baddest Marines and Navy SEALs on earth are under six feet tall. Probably most, Probably most of them. And so the point is where you're provisioning, the, the reason why women prefer tall men is for protection. The, the protection paradigm doesn't fit anymore in 2023 because a guy who's six, five, six can buy a Glock. It's a different world now. So what we have to believe as far as our prejudice against a woman with a high, high body count still is effective. It's still an effective protection for us in 2023, but women choosing taller men is actually irrational. It's actually irrational. Jeff Bezos, like it's actually irrational for you to do that. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's the reason why for our preference, it, both of these preferences are based in evolution. But our preference actually still makes sense. Whereas the preference for tall men actually, and I'm saying this as a guy who's 6'2", uh, the preference for tall men actually doesn't make sense anymore. It doesn't. And that's, that's the thing that's so crazy about it. So I actually think the, the, for women, men choosing women with a low body count actually makes more sense from an evolutionary standpoint is not a philosophy and is actually just a preference that's based on evolution.